You are watching Fight Sports. We're at the Staples Center. I'm Dave Bontemple along with Russ Anber, and we are ready for our main event, the showcase event. Bernard Hopkins against Howard Eastman for the middleweight championship as Bernard Hopkins tries to make his 20th successful title defense. He will try to do that against Howard Eastman in this 12-round bout in the Staples Center in Los Angeles. So the question is, at an age when most people would say, well, twilight is approaching, and Bernard Hopkins pull off another couple big ones. From Staples Center, Los Angeles, California, Oscar Le Loya's Golden Boy Promotions is proud to present the featured bout of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the undisputed middleweight championship of the world. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Raul Caiz Jr. And now, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, from Staples Center, Los Angeles, California, Let's get ready to rumble! Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing yellow, he stands six feet tall and officially weighs 159 and one half pounds. His professional record, an outstanding one. 41 bouts. 40 victories, including 35 knockouts, with only one defeat. And tonight, he is ready to shock the world. From Battersea, England, the WBC number one challenger in the world, the Battersea Bomber, Howard Eastman. And his opponent, across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black, standing six feet one. His official weight, 159 and one half pounds also. Professional record, 45 victories, including 32 knockouts, with only two defeats, one draw, and one no decision. This contest tonight is a record 20th title defense in the middleweight division, and his future, in the Boxing Hall of Fame is assured. Ladies and gentlemen, the fighting pride of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the universally recognized, undisputed, middleweight champion of the world, Bernard, the executioner, Hopkins. Second. Neither of these guys, Dave, I'll to me, look like they've got a big sweat on, a big warm-up no, sweat on. I, I think an Aceman no, may have lost his second, at it, and then he had to wait. I don't know if he was even warmed up uh, in time, you know, because that, because of the, right, how, fa how fast the Taylor fight. Hey, hey, but there's still no reason for it. Here on up. Let's have a good, clean fight. Touch gloves and good luck to both of you. Here we go. Howard Eastman and Bernard Hopkins. And uh, if they are, uh, Eastman looks a little dry, and Hopkins does too. You can be susceptible. You can get caught when you drive. Scheduled for 12. Ready, Bernard? Ready? Try to fill off here, Bernard Hopkins. And here's Eastman. Eastman tries to work his jab early. Hopkins circling. form chart. I said Eastman wouldn't take a backward step, and up to now, he's the one coming right at Hopkins, and it's Hopkins who's moving back. But that's also standard for Hopkins as well. Right, he's allowing Eastman to come toward him, but he's staying far enough away where nothing being thrown. These guys are lining up what might work for them throughout the fight. Trying to get a measure of where's the range on the jab, where do I have to be? 
What can I explode out with? You can tell a little tightness in there, indicative of the stakes present here. Hopkins, we know, is a notoriously slow starter, and that's what makes him the great fighter that he is. He studies, he looks, he evaluates. He throws a left hook. That's, he's just seeing what he's got what he's got to do and he picks he's able to switch gears and pick it up picks it up as the fight goes on so I mean that's why he's the great champion that he is because right now his brain is spinning 100 miles an hour now as to what he's got to do to cut this guy down what he has to do where he has to be to get that left hook in does he take a half step does he take a full step these are the things that fighters want to find out and fans wish they found out before they got in here as they start to uh, the call for more, they had the big anticipation. These guys are dry. I mean, they're, they're, uh, you're going to see them in a much different gear a couple rounds from now. See, both of them carry that front foot out in front of them. You can see that for perfect balance, able to land punches from far away and also get away from punches much easier when that front foot is out in front. If this was some type of a video game, you'd be fighting yourself. Take a look, these guys have similar styles Stop. right here. No punching, no punching, no punching. Break, step back, they both no want to advance forward, start back, with the jab. Back. This Los Angeles crowd is very impatient. They want fireworks as soon as the first round bell rings. Well, they read for a whole week what this was going to be like. And so you get your juices flowing. And then Jermaine Taylor sets the stage with his terrific performance. There's a lot to it with these guys studying it. Right now, the, the deliberate pace is, has everything to do with the fact that their styles are exactly the same at this moment. You have to go back to 1996 before you find uh, a victory for Bernard Hopkins in the first round. Second round action coming up now. These guys will... A little bit more. Howard Eastman in the yellow trunks with the green trim. Trying to go across the pond into the United States and come up with a big win. The last time he fought over here in a big match was the loss to William Joppy. Only loss in his career. And his only fight over here. Not an easy deal to go overseas, whether it's Fighters from England coming here or American fighters going to England and come up with a win. Especially when you're taking on the, be the best guy in boxing pound for pound in Bernard Hopkins. Bowie Fisher in the corner told Hopkins he wanted to stay behind that jab. He wanted him to establish the jab, which would establish the range of where he can reach the right hand or the left hook. And he's been tantalizing him with the left hand down low. And Hopkins digging his way in with the jab little by little. by Hopkins behind two jabs. You get the sense. Not too far away from exploding into something here. The right hand. There's a good action by Hopkins. And Eastman is back. Right with him. Eastman has a, a somewhat sideways stance. And he, he's got that left hand carried low, which is an invitation. And I think that an invitation for a right hand over the top. And that's exactly what Hopkins is looking for. He's trying to sneak in and just get that right hand coming over the top of maybe a lazy jab or off of his own one, too. Because it looks like it looks like Eastman only uses the left hand to block punches. And there was a good right, short right hand that landed. I figure that Eastman might be trying to set a trap for Hopkins, but he hasn't done much off the low left hand. See that left hand down low by Easton. He's trying to fire it up, Jeb. And here is Hopkins. Nice clubbing right hand by Hopkins as Eastman looks over at his corner for a quick bit of advice with Hopkins coming at him. Is smart. Hopkins is smart. He goes left. He goes right. He sees that Eastman is trying to line him up with the right hand. That's Eastman's bread and butter punch is that straight right hand. And Hopkins just walks away from it, turns, changes direction, almost as if he could read Eastman's thoughts. The fans not used to seeing Bernard Hopkins doing all this moving. 
They want him in a more assertive position. Hopkins gets more assertive as the fight moves, Dave. I mean, right now, he's still thinking. He tries the right hand over the top. Two jabs in a right by Hopkins, and Eastman tries to come back at him as round two goes into the books. You get a good look at this crowd, which is waiting to unleash as Bernard Hopkins and Howard Eastman go to work in round three. Hopkins 45, two and one, 32 knockouts. Eastman 40 and one with 35 knockouts. Bit of a sluggish beginning, but you know it will heat up. The second round had more intensity than the first. I'm gonna tell you guys twice, let's go, box! These guys try to find openings against each other on the inside. Hopkins with a jab and a quick right hand, and the left hand of Eastman is no longer down. That right hand, he was looking to land with that right hand. That right hand had intentions on him. He tried to time Eastman coming in and catch him with a short, looping right hand. He threw it with a lot of power as well. That's the first hard shot he's tried to land on Eastman. He thinks he sees something with that low left hand. And now Hopkins is lowering his. He gets Eastman to come in on him, and then he ties him up. So the cat and mouse struggle between two fighters who so far are waging the same style. And for Eastman, that's fine. He doesn't mind having Hopkins' style because keep him in the fight. Set him up for that puncher's chance. Eastman doesn't mind if this crowd boos. This is Hopkins' house. Good left hook there by Hopkins, and that brought a few reactions from the crowd. Good lead left hook. He jumped in really good and surprised Eastman. I don't think Eastman can fit, has figured out yet what Hopkins wants to do. The, the instructions from his corner, from Robert McCracken, his trainer, was he wanted to see him throw the jab right hand left hook combination and then dig Hopkins to the body. Up to now, he has done neither so far, and we're into the last minute of the fight. There's another short right hand over the top that Hopkins tried again. And Eastman gets a right hand in and got Hopkins' attention. And while they were being broken, Hopkins fighting out. Gets a little messy on the inside. And they continue. Now Eastman with that left hand down low again and Hopkins circling. Jab by Eastman able to touch Hopkins. Who continues his movement. Hopkins came back at Eastman who came in with his head. Oh, and a butt is quite possible the way these guys have their heads together, and they're warned by the referee for that exact same possibility. Ten seconds, stop at the bell, gentlemen. So round three had a little bit more than round two, and we'll see this progression. But nine more rounds to go. Is what happens with the right hand by Hopkins getting and he surprised these. That's the punch that he's, he was looking for in that round. He loaded up for it for the first time in this fight. And there was the lead left hook where he jumped in and caught Eastman as well. So both times, both punches now, the left hook and the overhand right have been successful for Bernard Hopkins. As we get ready for round four. Hopkins last fought in September when he defeated Oscar De La Hoya. Ninth round knockout. Tremendous body shots by Hopkins in that fight. Good short left hook. That's twice now that when Eastman has come forward, Hopkins has greeted him with a short left hook on the inside. He's been trying to pursue Hopkins, get him to move back. Hopkins moving laterally. He's been double jabs his way in and throws a right hand. And he's fighting with a lot of spunk. See, that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to get that double left jab working, followed up with the right hand, but uh, Hopkins almost can read it. He lets the double jab come, and then Eastman is stepping in too close, so he's smothering himself on his own right hand. Hopkins allowing him in. He's been trying to cut off the ring, and then Hopkins reaches out with the right hand and touches him. Hopkins is smart, slides in underneath that long reach of Eastman, and then when, he tries, when Eastman tries the, the, the long right hand, 
Hopkins is underneath it. Uh, a fight that looked like it might have two bulls has had more of a matador aspect thus far with Hopkins moving, luring Eastman in, trying to dodge out of the way, and then tap him. If Eastman is having difficulty reaching Hopkins, what he should probably be doing now is going to the body. I mean, he has his only thrown really one body shot, and that was right just earlier with the left hook when Hopkins was moving on the ropes, but he should probably, when he's got Hopkins moving back, is get on that body, then work your way up to the head. Hopkins missing over the top with his right hand. He's been coming up short with his right hand. It's been tough for either guy to really get a rhythm going. Hopkins has purpose to his movement. But it hasn't been offensive purpose at this point. They, it's one thing to study a situation. But we're ready to get out of college pretty soon. <laughs> in a weird way. Maybe that's what this fight is going to serve up. Make it more these, of a chess match, you mean? These guys, uh, you look at their their, their height and everything, no, no pressure, no they pressure, like to pressure. do a lot of the same no things. Pressure. That's not always a pleasing matchup. And their slop both are being somewhat sloppy on the inside. We're not seeing the inside work that we saw, say, in the Kingsley Aikiki bout, where they were on the inside content to work good hard body shots. We have not seen any kind of a body attack pretty much from either guy. Hopkins hasn't had to, and Eastman hasn't. It's been five months between fights for these guys, and they look a little rusty at times, because that's not a major layoff. But they, they both want to try and do the same thing. We'll talk more about that in subsequent rounds. Left hook landed for Hopkins. As we get tipped around five, there's Howard Eastman and Bernard Hopkins. And now they, they look fully warmed up. And they came out dry in the first round with the delay. Now they've got the sweat going and they're into their rhythm. Funny thing, as we're into round five, the crowd's been booing as these guys have been stylistic in the first four rounds. The only people happy are the trainers. They go back to the corner, the trainers are jamming beautiful, it doesn't matter, <laughs> and like that, the, 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 the trainers don't love the crowd-pleasing fights because then the guy is getting hit too much. That, the good point, and, and both of them, as you know, are both slow starters, and I thought was the, that was the case with Eastman against William Choppy, because they're not going at it slow now. Now there's some heavy leather being thrown there. And Eastman with a left hook on Hopkins, trying to move him back now. As this baby has heated up. And then Eastman behind the head. He'll be warned about it. Both fighters have been doing it. No choir boys in there. I'm glad the referee, Raul Caez, got in right away and warned them about the rabbit punches in the back of the head because we've been seeing too much of that in boxing lately, and it's a dangerous foul, and I don't like to see it. He's been backing Hopkins up here. He's got a little momentum together as he's able to fire offensive punches with Hopkins on the ropes. Left hook lead again for Bernard Hopkins. Eastman is coming at him now. Double jab. Cutting down the ring. Good left hook by Hopkins to the body. He's been trying to measure Hopkins. It is an unusual sight to see a man called the best pound for pound boxer in the world to be constantly being chased. He's doing, he's making Eastman chase him. That's what he's doing. He's reeling him in and trying to ca counter counter him with left hooks and right hands, especially that overhand right. So, it's, I mean, obviously, there's the right hand over the top, and that's exactly what he's trying to do. And there it is, right hand, left hook, and Eastman, and Eastman right is back. With him. A slugfest is on. When you think of Hopkins as such a dominant fighter, and this is a unique twist for him. It's a risky one, too, because he's countering. There's a good jab by Hopkins. He doubles up. Look at them staring at each other. This is turned to business now, Dave. The polo by Hopkins. Big left hook by Hopkins. Throw the first four rounds out. 
could start right now. And the mano a mano is on. And the crowd shows up. Hopkins getting his jab, his hook. Good hook there. the hook that lands, and Eastman stayed right with him. Eastman had predicted a fifth-round knockout. He didn't get the knockout, but he certainly threw and landed more than he had in the four previous rounds. Into round six we go, scheduled for 12. Bernard, the executioner, Hopkins in the black trunks. 45-2-1 with 32 knockouts. Harold Eastman, 40 wins, one loss, 35 knockouts. Hopkins from Philadelphia. And Eastman from England, originally from Guyana. So Hopkins has been the pot shot artist in the last couple of rounds as he tries to execute Eastman and get the 20th successful title defense. Hopkins likes that lead left hook, boy. Every time Eastman makes a move, and that's why Hopkins carrying the left hand a little bit low because he's bringing the right hand, the right, the left hook underneath. That's why he's carrying the left hand low. He has been crafty the last couple of rounds. Punching off the angle, darting in, right hand leads against the righty. The stuff that you don't get away with unless you catch the guy on such a surprise angle that he cannot count. So he tried it again there, and there's the right hand over the top. So he fainted the left hook and then came back over with the right hand. That's quick thinking. There's the left hook lead again. Hopkins is not as far away from Eastman. He's attacking now, and a big right hand by Hopkins. This round, he's coming to Eastman. We no, no haven't no seen point. much of that from Hopkins, but he has seen something to indicate that now is the time to be more on the attack. He's been trying that right hand, and it's been successful for him. Good left hook by Hopkins. Now he starts to try and wear down Eastman. Let's go, put that Eastman just has to be busier. He has to let his hands go more. He's throwing one punch at a time, some kind of a lazy jab. He's got to get busier. He's just not putting enough punches together. In the opening round, when Hopkins was letting Eastman come to him, Eastman could be satisfied with that pace, and he was standing in there holding his own. Now, with Hopkins increasing his activity, Eastman cannot stay at the level he was at. No, and the thing is, Eastman had increased his activity in the fifth round, so he shouldn't be taking the sixth no, round no, off. No, 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 no. Maybe I took the sixth yeah. round off, huh? We'll check on Eastman's uh, gas tank as we go along, because uh, he had engaged Hopkins in round five. In round six, it's been Hopkins on the dominant end, and he's been reaching and lunging and missing. Hopkins tying him up. So as we get to the halfway point, the executioner looking like the spoiler, but he's been effective. Hopkins had it going in the last round. Big right hand over the top. He's been looking for that punch since the third round, and he's finding it more and more now. Over the open left side of Howard Eastman, that short right hand over the top is finding the mark. Good jab setting oh. things up, and then he, he takes his chin back. Textbook. The old time moves by Bernard Hopkins in Philadelphia. Great source of fighters, and here we go. Into the second half of the fight. Bernard Hopkins from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. 45 2 and 1, 32 knockouts. Going against Howard Eastman from England. He is 40 and 1 with 35 knockouts. Hopkins has been a cutesy fighter. Waiting, countering, and trying to break down Eastman in the last couple of months. I, th I think, Dave, that Hopkins has shown a lot of versatility. He's done some punching, he's done some boxing, he's done some counter punching. I think he's shown a lot of versatility in this fight against Eastman, and Eastman hasn't shown enough. He's only looking to load on the one, the one long right hand, which he has not found the mark at all. He's, he hasn't sustained any kind of a body attack for, to try to slow Hopkins down, and his left hook has virtually been non-existent. Hopkins has taken a lot away with his subtle inside movement, good head movement. He's been missing. Great majority of the shots is coming up a little shy. Credit 
the head movement of Hopkins. Punch out the front. Let's go. Punch out. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. There it is. You see, when, when Eastman works, he, he keeps Hopkins on the defensive. He just doesn't sustain enough of an attack. He's got to he's got to take the chance. He has to gamble if he's going to try to be successful in this fight. To just sit there and be a target is not going to be enough against Bernard Hopkins. Now he shows some good inclinations in round five and a little smattering of it there. You hear Hopkins in the corner between rounds. He said, Sugar Ray Robinson, boy, number 20, number 20. Who knows how this is going, and yet, well, usually you figure a guy wants to turn power. He's content to box. And he'll box all night if that's what it is. Again, I like the mix, you know. Every now and then, he's boxing, boxing, then he surprises you, and he tries that power shot, like right there in the right hand. A lead right hand. Yep. Normally, you would throw that against the lefty, but he throws it against the righty and gets away with it. There it is again. Well, that's behind the jab. That really worked well for him. And he is starting to sharpshoot. Lay off his hand, lay off his hand. Let's go. Punch out of the control zone. Let's go. Punch out of the He's coming to Easton a lot. Stop. Come on, punch up. Here we go. Hit the body. Hit the body, X. Hit the body, X. I think the boxing style is uh, produced by the fact that these guys have similar height. And, and their styles are, are the same. No, very similar. I mean, both both talented boxers. The thing is, Eastman has put himself into positions where he can punch, and he's just not doing it. He's backing up Hopkins. He gets him into range near the ropes. He has to be more sustained when he's got the ropes when he, he ends up falling in and, get, and gets clinched. One at a time. We'll never get it in there for you. Not against somebody like Hopkins. Round seven is history. No, oh, no punching. Then he run into the jab, dig that body, X Factor, walking back. Okay. Punch in combination, son. Okay. Dig that body, X. Alright, so as we get into round eight. Yeah, in football, the major sports defense wins championship. And right now for Bernard Hopkins, defense is winning it for him here because we were talking about the fact that Howard Eastman is lunging, waiting, throwing out the jab, and coming up short. He's about two steps. Too far away from Stop. Bernard no punch, Hopkins. No punch, gentlemen. Here we go. He is landing at a rate of 13% through seven rounds. And he's the guy who has 40 wins and one loss and is used to being on the mark 13%. And he's and he's not throwing enough either to no, no even punch, that's the key. It's not so much the connect rate, but it's the output rate is really low as well. Yeah, but even at 13%, you throw a million punches, you won't win at 13%. No, but at least you increase your chances of landing something the more you throw. There's Hopkins, and Hopkins is at 37%, and that's a climbing percentage because he was off the mark earlier too, but good right hand by Hopkins is now he's stepping into another gear. Two good right hands, actually. Well, he's like a viper. He just, like, gradually closes on his guy. And Eastman is not doing anything to adapt either. He sees that Hopkins is trying that right hand over the top time and time again, and he won't do anything. He won't change direction, take a step off to his right, get the left hand up. He's just staying there, eating the right hand as it's coming over. And, and the chest match, he's been waiting on Hopkins. Figures he'll get off first. He has Hopkins in the corner. The time to do it was right then. And Hopkins gets away. That's right, and he's not doing it. He, and, and Hopkins is almost waiting for him to throw something, and he won't throw it. It's almost as if Eastman knows Hopkins' reputation and just figured he'd be on him the whole night. And now he's forced to bring the fight to Hopkins at this juncture, and, and he's missing. There's the right hand again. Eastman fired back with his own right hand. That was a good exchange. And Hopkins a grazing variety and Eastman is coming back at him and look at the head movement by Hopkins. Of course up in row 50 these are all flush palms. Crowd getting into it. These punches are missing by Eastman but he's showing good intensity. That one didn't miss. That one landed good on Hopkins. Hopkins had to step back from that one. He made him miss the first one but the second one landed. Now Hopkins comes back with his own jab and falls inside. This is what I mean about by increasing your punch output. If you increase the punch output, something will eventually land. Eastman has to get busy if he wants to win this fight. Hey, you've got nothing to lose when it's 13%. You might as well just fire away. Exactly. Hopkins with three shots here. He is an elusive target for Eastman. 
as Hopkins went into a variety of attacks, Eastman has been stuck in the same gear as he eats a left hook. But at least he's firing back. We got us a fight now. A little afterward, too. Shots in him now, hook at the chest and he won't go wide, all right? Mm -hmm. Keep your head moving head and back him up behind the jab and the right hands. Head up. Head up. Head up. Yeah? Yeah. Well, they mixed it up during the round and afterward, too. It's turned into a fight now, hasn't it? They're going at it. Raul Kaya's have to get in there and separate them. We uh, got us a fight now, Dave. Three minutes and three seconds, that round. So to round nine we go. Bernard Hopkins of Philadelphia, 45, 2 and 1, 32 knockouts. Howard Easton of England, 40 and 1, 35 knockouts. Let's go. Let's go. Last round was a slugfest after the fact as they kept going. And let's see if there's any spillover into the ninth. Eastman, who had a 13% connect percentage through seven rounds, must step it up and convey some urgency. Hopkins has been difficult to hit. Look at the head movement of Hopkins. Making Eastman go over the top and around. I'm not sure if it's a question of Hopkins being difficult to hit as much as it's been of, of, of Eastman's reluctancy to hit him. That's been more the case. But when he opens up, they stay on quite even terms. And there's good shots exchanged by both fighters when Eastman lets his hands go. That's when he opens up. But when he's still trying to jab yeah. and, and, and be fundamental, Hopkins' head movement has enabled him to duck a lot of punches, a lot of potential good punches, too. He's been over the top. The left hook gets in. Hopkins is back. Eastman has nothing to lose. He likes rolling the dice right here with Hopkins. A big hook by Hopkins. Eastman is a puncher. And this is right down the avenue of a puncher's chance. And the only way a puncher has a chance is to throw punches, Dave, and that's going to have to be the key for him. He has to work down this stretch and put his hands together. He's got to let the right hand go. He's got to follow it up with the left hook, because if he stays in there waiting for pot shots, that's Bernard Hopkins' game. Moving Hopkins back. Hopkins just pops the jab in. Hopkins moving out of danger and going to the other side. A lot of side to side movement by Hopkins. Look at the looks he shows that Eastman continually adjusting. You can hear them exhorting Eastman from the corner. Go to work. Throw the double jab, right hand, left hook. They want him to let his hands go. And they want him to have that same fire under his belly that he had at the end of round eight. They want that to continue over him. Whatever happens, be in there flailing. See, even when he misses shots, like if he's been misses the right hand, he should be coming back across with the left hook. But by only throwing one punch at a time, Hopkins is able to get away from it, and there's nothing coming behind it. Jared by Eastman. Right hand comes up short. They look over the top of Hopkins again. Right. Now, if he has an uppercut after that, he'll nail it. Right. But at least he kept Hopkins on the defensive because he threw more than one punch at a time. Counter. Good counter by Hopkins as he walked Eastman into the trap. So Eastman still has that puncher's chance. But Hopkins is getting points. This was a right hand that stopped Eastman right in his tracks. Stopped him dead right there. Good right hand. He's been finding that all night. He's finding the right hand. One thing we've not seen as we go into round 10 of the scheduled 12 round bout. We've seen no combination. We've seen some one and a punch, one time and a, a shot. One big shot here and there, but not the two, not the three. These guys have not been able to put them together. They've been pot shotting as they've been studying and being fundamental, but the brawl hasn't been there, except for an occasion. That's right. On occasion, when Eastman would let his hands go, then he engages he engages Hopkins, and Hopkins then has no choice but to fire back. But when, when he lets Hopkins box, and he only throws one shot at a time, Hopkins pot shots him. Right hands, left hook, like you saw right there. 
and this crowd wants to get into more than just that shot. They, they land a, a good shot, and you hear the reverberation through this crowd. Absolutely. And there's the two jabs in the right hand by Eastman coming up a little bit short. Bernard Hopkins is used to distance fights. Ten rounds or more in seven of his last nine. Good hook by Hopkins. And they wait on each other. Look at that frozen shot. The one, Stare down. Yeah, the one thing that I'm noticing is the basic difference why Eastman can't get his shots off. He doesn't have that fluidity to his combinations. They're almost, even when he does put two or three shots together, they're not really two or three shots. They're like three single punches put together. There's no fluidity. He's not bringing it around in a smooth motion, right hand, left hook, instantly right behind each other. So Hopkins is able to see it. See, and he has time to counter. And move back. Yeah. He's been coming in and getting with the head. Hopkins ties him up. Hopkins has been content to pity Pat when that's been convenient, which has been a lot of the time. And then he lands the good right hand when he's been gets in too far. Good quick counter right hand, uh, left hook from, from Hopkins. Look at the Hopkins head movement. He's been came, he bent at the waist. He's been the uppercut would be a good thing to follow after his first punch traveled too high. I don't believe he's thrown an uppercut in, the, in, in this fight so far. And, and it's there for him. Or a body attack to sustain. I'm surprised at the lack of body attack. Oh, there it was. We spoke too soon, but there it was. Uh, we've been uh, talking about that uppercut for East, but he got it there. Uh, you think body, he heard us? <laughs> the body attack against a guy like Hopkins moving, that's why he can't get his body attack going. Hopkins is not in front of him. Hopkins with a jab in the right hand. Good hook by Hopkins. And so it continues to be a workmanlike performance by Hopkins. He's been enjoying some flashes. What is he doing enough? Two rounds to go. Get a look at Eastman opening up after the left hook by Hopkins. Just when we said he hasn't thrown an uppercut, there was a left hook. That left hook counter from Hopkins, that was pretty. And just when we said Eastman hasn't thrown an uppercut all night, I don't know if he heard us at ringside or not, but this shot comes in right from underneath. We don't get to see it. Beautiful uppercut landed from Eastman. And into round 11, Bernard Hopkins with a huge left hook. As we start, the 11th round, scheduled for 12. Good left hook again by Hopkins. Well, Bernard Hopkins, 45, 2 and 1, 32 knockouts. Victories over Felix Trinidad, Oscar De La Hoya, sitting at top boxing's pound to pound circles. Howard Eastman, 40 and 1, 35 knockouts. Oh, left hook again lands, Dave. Again the left hook. So, Hopkins, He's had an edge 37% to 14% on a connect percentage in this bout. And, you know, we've seen Bernard Hopkins win many different ways, most times with power. Here, he's in defense, but he just got nailed. Howard Eastman showing you why he's got that puncher's chance. He drilled Hopkins. Hopkins landed a left hook, too, just before that, and Eastman stood there and fired right back. Saw the uh, legs of Bernard Hopkins wobble for a second. And Hopkins holding on. Can Eastman follow up? Does he have enough stamina here? Can he sense the opportunity? Good effort by Eastman moments ago. Does he have the chance to follow up? As he pulls in on Hopkins. Good hook by Hopkins on the run. Then the uppercut by Hopkins. Eastman picked it off. Eastman starting to apply more pressure now. A little bit more desperation showing in his attack. He's got to let his hands go, though. Hopkins content to move on the outside. Now we switch to the southpaw stance Hopkins has. We don't see that too often from him. Hopkins trying to buy some time. It comes up with the left hand. He's treating. He's been now like a sparring partner, coming in just trying different things in the middle of the fight. He was hurt for a while in that, this round. Good combination by Eastman. Heads come together again, and Hopkins.
Hopkins with a left hook and a lead right hand as if Eastman were a lefty. Able to sneak that in there. He's done it many times in this fight. Howard Eastman running out of time as he tries to cut down Hopkins. Tried this. Eastman tried that right hand coming out of the clinch and just fell short. He needs to keep the jab going all the time and then try things off of that. But he pawed with his right hand and Hopkins, Hopkins snapped his. And there's a the big uppercut by Eastman. It just did miss Hopkins' his chin. And Howard Eastman will have one round to try to pull a miracle out of the tap. I got to give that round to Eastman. Yep. One round left to try to beat the pound for pound king of boxing, Bernard Hopkins. Final round of this 12 round of the Staples Center crowd up on its feet. We're glad that you're enjoying this. I'm Dave Bontempo along with Russ Amber, the Staples Center in Los Angeles, California. Hopkins 45, 2 and 1, 32 knockouts. Eastman 40 and 1, 35 knockouts. There have been flashes of brawls, but mostly it's been pesky persistence by Hopkins. The crowd that was booing at the beginning of these first three rounds came up to their feet and applaud for the start of this 12th round for these two guys. Well, when these guys have thrown their punches, there have been no cheap ones. No, it's been heated, and then they've been powerful punches as well. And Eastman again lands a good left hook and got two Hopkins. Now the question is, with the way this fight is developed stylistically, beforehand there was a the thought that there could be a clamor for Hopkins Taylor if they both fought well and looked impressive. Will there be that same clamor oh. after this? Left hook from Hopkins lands. And the right, right hand. hand by by Hopkins. The pot shotting expert. Will, will, will people appreciate his sense of fundamentals? Enough to start demanding the fight with Taylor, or would they want another De La Hoya type performance from Bernard Hopkins? I think we'll get some indications from the crowd when this fight ends. What kind of reaction they get? You know, it, the way, you know, based on what we've seen, my thought coming in was, you know, Hopkins is 40. Taylor is vastly improving. Make that fight now before Taylor improves too much. Two years from now, I don't think Hopkins can beat Taylor. You know, that's one way of looking at it, but I would also turn around and say, if you didn't know Bernard Hopkins was 40 years old, and you stood here and you said to me, Russ, we're looking at a nice young champion here making a defense of this title, and he's a good prospect and looks like he has a big future, you'd be accurate. He doesn't look 40. He doesn't show, he's not showing any signs of where. As a matter of fact, he's been masterful in this fight. What has kept this fight close is Eastman's punching power. So we're sitting on the edge of our seat, expecting Eastman to explode at any time. But Hopkins has dominated this bout with his boxing skills, the overhand right, the left hook. He's just been all over this ring, and he's played Matador to Eastman the ball. I think he has shown a little bit of uh, yeah, savvy, but against Jermaine Taylor, a guy who punches a lot more accurately and a lot more willingly than Eastman. Yeah, Hopkins wouldn't be able to fight this exact type of style. So, that being said, what will the crowd want? They're mixed. Some on their feet and some bowling. I think this, the, the fact that these guys are close in height played a big fact in how this was waged. Yes, and also the fact that, I mean, as much as people think how dominant Bernard Hopkins is, Bernard Hopkins has never been and will never be a one-punch knockout artist. You're going to see fights like this where he's going to use the ring, where he's going to pot shot, where he's going to slip and slide and get out of trouble to win fights. That's why he's been undefeated right, since 1993. Michael Buffer has the numbers for us. I'll tell you what, Dave. Ladies and gentlemen, here at Staples Center in Los Angeles, we go to the scorecards. Lou Filippo scores the contest, 119-110. Daniel Vanderveel, 117-111.
Ken Morita, 116-112, all to the winner by unanimous decision, and still undisputed middleweight champion of the world, Bernard, the executioner, Hopkins. Well, there was no execution. It was more like aggravated assault. But Bernard Hopkins with some sterling defensive work. I think that a lot of people underestimate the talents of Howard Eastman. And I think Howard Eastman gave a hell of a fight to Bernard Hopkins. And I think that Bernard Hopkins put on a heck of a performance as well to overcome this tough opponent because he hit the batter seat bomber with some bombs of his own, overhand rights and hard left hooks. And, and Eastman just kept coming. So for Russ Amber, Frank Belmont, our fine crew, this is Dave Bontempo saying so long from the Staples Center, and we'll see you next time, everybody.